Ooh, what's up guys, and as always, welcome back to another video of a Pokemon that just simply was bad from this debut generation. And I want to cover a Pokemon that was bad for a really long time, and in theory it didn't really get that buff it needed, but it got what I would consider the buff needed to work, but it took a few years to make that kind of work. Polyrath. In theory, the best generation one fighting Pokemon, it's just unfortunate fighting Pokemon in general shit <laughs> generation one really there is nothing to it psychic are so good that it it doesn't matter the reason you use polyrath is because you want to have a speedier slow bro that matter is kind of weird but basically polyrath got access to amnesia which means it can special sweep with surf and uh, hydro pump and it gets access to ice beam so it, it's all right but um it also gets access to Submission, which its only main trait is that it can punish normal types, which are so good in that very generation. But the issue with Polarath is it is not speed enough. It won't beat the Psychics that will absolutely beat it. However, it has the speed to make sure it doesn't lose to every explode Pokemon. It definitely makes sure the Golem does not get a field day, in contrast to Slowbro then, which of course will not have that very <laughs> same field day. But yeah, first generation, will probably be for a long time Polarath's best one but it wasn't a very good one only ranking at D if for all of you and trust me that is its ranking it gets for a long time go over to gold and silver and crystal Polarath did I get to two things that makes it very good it just it is so many factors that makes it not work and first and foremost you got a lovely kiss a very good sleeping inducing move the other one being Billidrum Sadly, Belladrum is not a, a very good thing, uh, mainly because while you do boost yourself for your attack, you're still only way like the only real move of attacking is that submission, and uh, you know the A plus um, like the, the SS tiers basically the, the great ones in OU. Unfortunately, at this time was Snorlax and Chansey. Submission is a 25% recall. And you won't do a whole lot versus a Snorlax with one curse behind it and go in for a Belladrum on that is just greedy. Trust me, there was really no reason of using ever Polarath in Generation 2. Um, I feel for it as I liked it, but it actually only got Dynamic Punch. That is, they treated that type in so poorly. Like, Mijamp was in theory the best fighting type to race for Cross Shop, and it still wasn't a very good fighting type at that point. And Heracross didn't have a fighting move, got a reversal I think, and that's about it. It's extremely unreliable and used Heracross for defensive utilities only um, in that generation. Uh, but yeah, Polarath, extremely forgettable, unfortunately. In um, Ruby and Sapphire, it got... Ah, uh, nah. It got Brick Break, which most fighting type got, and it was right for it. But uh, now there was a steep competition with the fighting type. You used Polyrath in underuse mainly for one thing, and that was makes sure Sukun didn't like sweep you. So that was a niche it had with Water Absorb because this was the generation we got abilities, but yeah, there was really no reason ever, ever to consider it. And I want to cover another thing too. I know that people were using Billadrum and Substitute and Selectberry, but first and foremost, um, Heracross was vastly superior to that set. The other one was that Select Berry, while boosting your speed, it didn't boost you enough. Um, there are scenarios here, for example, that at Adamant, Polyrath, you want to most of the time go Adamant, you will not be able to outspeed Electro, for example. And while not that common, it is some mod you gotta prep for. And you got yourself locked into Brick Break, and then I hit a power of choice. And of course, in the power knock could be physical and special, so you wanna lock yourself with possibly a Ghost Move or Rock Move. Because, yeah, no Rock Slide, no Stone Edge. And of course, the water fillers, while good, yeah, it was hard at this time. Polarath had the workings of a very good Pokemon, but it didn't have a move pool to pull that off. And once the like physical and special split kind of came off, it still didn't help it. I, I should enforce here also that Polito was having a similar journey, but due to access to growth, the original 2 was kind of good. Um, and, and then it was extremely forgettable, the generation 3. Uh, generation 4, however, Polarath is now falling. It's free falling through the tiers and going to become an NU Pokemon this generation. While it has viability in UU, 
you, you mostly use it for a, a, a semi sub punch set. Um, this time we got Uncredition Region, which is great for it. Um, it also has Focus Punch. It has Focus Punch before this too, uh, but Encore is now a utility move, and you can now capitalize with Substitute, Waterfall, which of course physical now, Rise Punch, and can capitalize on Brick Break too, uh, or even Bulk Up to some scenarios. But this is also the generation where, while all of, all of this is good, this is the same generation which Hangroff is introduced, which basically said no matter what <laughs> Polar can pull off, it will be shut down. Um, while the Velodrome said do beat it to an extent, you, you're also going to try to pull that off versus a tier that clearly are faster than you. And, and that's the running theme. Now Polarath are defined much like Melodic. Like Melodic is a very speedy Pokemon 81 base speed. So in theory, if you want to have a bulky water, you probably want to use a bulky water. Um, and Polarath had no utility besides that. It, it got a few niche things, but in theory, it would just be able to make sure that, you know, stuff like Fur Alligator, Suicune could not spam their water moves to sweep, and that's that's not a strong utility, really. I mean, in contrast, I saw a Reddit post, or I mean, a Smoga post, that in theory, with um, with Rindleberry, Polarat should be able to beat M Manaphy to an extent because of these utilities, but the energy ball is just so vast. And that, and that's the thing. Like we're we're running through the tiers. That's it, it, things are coming, but they're not really there yet. In generation two, I mean five, it kind of hit off. Polarab got its Dream World ability in um, in Swift Swim, which made it an extremely potent threat in theory. And also, Paul Toe got Grizzle. You, you figure out which one was the winner there. Uh, <laughs> Polarab is not bad now. It has two utilities. But it's slowly but surely becoming a more defensive Pokemon that fills other defensive roles. It also got circles for all this generation, which is probably why more you want to use it because now it could be capitalized to be a facer, and it could be a physical facer that could skull burn you and it could easily recover. Fro is in many ways superior to this role than Polarath, but Polarath has water absorb, which makes it infinitely more utility like. And better defenses, only poorer matchup at times, but basically stall teams like Polyrath. It's just so weird seeing a Pokemon that got now all the utilities to be sweeping are gonna be passive anyway. <laughs> because that's how we roll. It should be said though, we have yet to see him getting any proper stab. It doesn't get close combat, Dream Punch or Superpower. Uh, it made sure that any physical brownness, even with Switch Swim, was not gonna be well capitalized, mainly because the were Pokemon with Switch Swim in, in its year. Of course, it's um, in its tier, but also in general, they were better. For example, Cabotops. Cabotops was an uber Pokemon due to Drizzle alone, and um, Polarath did not pull that weight, even with Belly Drum in mind and having I know, a, a fixed Drizzle that never cut out. It, it just wasn't enough. And it's weird seeing how the tools are there, but it, the effectiveness just isn't there at all. In generation 6, and that, this is my favorite generation, and I like Polar rather low a lot, but it never made sense to me the set that were used in the end, because it ended up in NU, it was used in Yuji and RU as a brain sweeper ish, but its main set now was a special attacker. Focus Blast, Scald, Ice Beam, and Vacuum Wave with leftovers, and it did alright. 70 base special attack is not great, but just Focus Blast. Poor, that the pure damage really was a poor damage, pure. It just was worth using. Nice P was infinitely better than Ice Punch in most of the scenarios. It was most of the times defensively shift and hard to use, which meant the special set made more sense because it had utilities and a broader overall mode pool, plus a priority in vacuum wave, which was making it very dangerous. It made sure the Shell Smasher was not gonna, <laughs> gonna get away with stuff that easy. And just overall, I liked it. Uh, also, the main threat in NU, if I remember correctly, in Generation 6 was Tauros and uh, Pyro. None of those wanted to take a vacuum wave ever. And the other great defensive Pokemon that was used in NU was also. Um, not Gorgeist. The, the, ah! No, oh, it's called Gorgeist. The, the pumpkin Pokemon. It, it is Gorgeist, right? I, I, I'm. 
I'm confusing it with Golar for some reason. But that was one of the mods that could defensively check it, and with Ice Beam capitalize it, it could turn up to 40% damage on it, even if it is the buff fat set. Trust me, that was a great way. They made sure if you did it right, you could very well KO it with Stealth was active. So, not a bad mod at all. It, just not Apex. And with Sword and Shield, here's what finally gets on tier. It's in theory unusable. And it's not really unusable, but it doesn't get anything. Um, it's an option for PU, but it's a special tank yet again uh, with its utilities, but now it struggles even more, mainly because there are a lot more Pokemon that are falling behind. And I remember one of the main mods that actually kind of just made sure it never will work is Jellicent. Jellicent was running the PU as a stall breaker in theory, but with Skull being absorbed, Focus Blast missing, Ice Beam being resisted, Vacuum Beam being missed, you end up running Toxic on Polyrath, and Polyrath is not bulky enough to, to Toxic stall, and even if so, you have Quillfish for that, why would you? Um, so there were really in theory nothing for it. I'm, I do believe Lycanroc was in that tier, and in, in theory, I guess that was a mod he could check. But it was just too much what ifs. So Polyrath, extremely forgettable, and it wasn't till I'm gonna enforce this because this is how bad it is. It took them 15 years to make sure Polara got a proper physical stab. But once it got it, maybe it was too late. Maybe it was. But fuck me, it got it. And it actually became, to me, a very personal favorite Pokemon by default. Not only did they, of course, give it superpower in um, Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, they also gave it in Sword and Shield close combat and brain punch, making sure that the bull cap set, it could now in theory um, pull the Scrafty set with bull cap, theory rest, brain punch, but also got another thing that made sure Jelly Scent was giving it the finger, it kind of settled it, it's not perfect, but it got it, it got Darkest Lariat, it got proper dark stab, so now it got everything to work as a physical Pokemon. It can still run special, but now we're we're, we're running out of like the crazy fear territory. It, it's not bad, but basically it is defensive enough to still have the circles throw skull set with rest of sleep talk. It does that right. It's it's a phenomenal set. But but you use it for the liquidation, close combat, darkest lariat, earthquake or poison jab. It is now a complete physical sweeper in PU's run, Choice Pan or Choice Goth, and it does the right. I mean, it's not it's not super speed. As I said, 70 base speed is not that impressive, but it is defensive enough to pull that off and take hit and come into fix. It does outspeed, in, in general, the more defensive Pokemon. This is one of the guys who comes in on aggro and just say, bro, stay in and die, please. <laughs> but the thing is here, and it should definitely be said. It, it still goes on tier, it's still using CU, I remember. Um, but in its deb debut, in before before the buffs and everything was introduced, um, Polarath had the tools to, with Belly Drum and Rain to make short work with Rain Punch of most opposing Pokemon. C combined it with Dar Darkest Lariat, and it had, in theory, a complete move pool. There were really nothing stopping Polarath in this scenario. And it's one of the few Pokemon that actually are a bulky belly, belly drummer. And then that, that makes it a very dangerous Pokemon. It becomes in a very dangerous place because of that. So I'm very happy to see they figured out how to make Polarath work. It's just unfortunate 15 years in the making to make that happen. I'm very, very interested in knowing what would Polarath have been Generation 4 had it started off with something like Close Combat from the get go. Would it be rivaling Cabotops with more defensive utilities in Ubers when Kyogre had only Drizzle? And even so, in Generation 5, would that be the same thing? Because I think Polarath and Cabotops are doing the same type of things, but Polarath is a more defensive, reliable Pokemon. It just feels replaced and not strong enough, and it's a very niche type in that's only replicated by what? Keldeo? And they still do the different things, so it's kind of ironic we see Keldeo and Polarath. Or Polarat go in special eventually in Generation 6 to be able to do something differently, but it's still doing what Keldeo already showed works. But yeah, that's the journey of Polarat. I hope you enjoyed this short little summary of what a tadpole 
buff guy can do is not a lot. Amnesia didn't do much for it. It just became extremely forgettable uh, for being so unique. I have no idea how they made it so forgettable. So that's it guys, always for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next video. Till then, until then, take care, right?